It's Friday afternoon. And just ending the work week with a mosquito laden mountain trek. Easily 300 feet vertical gain. Just for shits. What's on my head? Just a box of iron. Nothing, nothing too crazy. This is a crazy place. I mean, there's beautiful views, but it is just exhausting to walk home. Oh. So during the summer of 2019, while I was apprenticing in Japan, one of the jobs we did off and on was to restore this old house in the town of Onomichi, which as you just saw is poised on a great slope towards the inland sea. It's really an incredible place and the owners are some of the nicest people, super generous and amazing cooks, just the sweetest people that can be. It's already day two of our renovation project in Onomichi. It's already 90 something degrees outside. We uh, pulled all the tiles off yesterday and a whole bunch of dirt. And it was the dirtiest and hardest work. And today we pulled the rafters off so far. And it looks like we might have to replace this structure because it's too damaged, too rotten. So that could be fun. This is going to be a beautiful little home when it's restored. There's a lot of old patina on these posts and beams that are in good condition. Okay, back to it. The bulk of the work here was replacing the deteriorating tiled roof with a new structure. I learned a lot about roofing styles during this project and I figure this would be a good way to share how two types of roof frames are constructed. In Japan, not only is there an emphasis on building things efficiently to a high standard, but also building them with an eye toward future maintenance and repair. The challenge with this building was that the roof framing technique used in the past made it far more difficult to do the repairs. So let me illustrate that with these graphics. Here's an example of the Oryoki roof style assembled. And now watch how it goes together and then how it comes apart. The important thing to notice here is that the Keta beam right here, it just simply lifts off of the spanning beam so that if that beam were rotted out like it was in this project, replacing it would be easy, just pull it off and replace. Unfortunately, this roof was built using the Kyoro style. While uh, it looks basically the same, the, there's a big difference. Do you see it? In this case, the spanning beam comes down on top of the Keta, kind of locking it in place. So to replace that, you'd have to take out the spanning beams as well, which are, you know, in the case of an existing roof, holding up the rest of the roof structure and the ridge and everything like that. So it becomes a lot of work. You basically have to take the whole roof apart. And so given the constraints of this project, the time and the budget we had, our solution was to cut out and replace the rotted sections at the ends of the Keta. And you can see the replacement sections here. We also pulled lines and leveled off the tsuka, which are these small posts that support the purlins and uh, the ridge. And we installed new purlins and then a whole new set of rafters. Followed by these tongue and groove cedar boards that can be seen from the inside. And then a lightweight insulation board layer. And then nailing strips for the sheathing and finally the sheathing boards. What I really like is that these cedar boards uh, we're using for sheathing are actually more cost effective than plywood in Japan. It's nice to use the actual wood instead of sort of ground up, glued together garbage. 
The next part of this project that I was happy to take on was the replacement of this small shed roof over a little bump out at the front of the house. I followed a similar process to the main roof, first pulling off the rotten Keta beam. Then I transferred the positions of the tenons to a story pole to make the replacement Keta. And once that was fabricated, we adjusted the supporting post tenons so that they were all level rather than fit to the wavy height of the original beam. Using the newly installed Keta, we could size and position the upper rafter ledge. And then it was, again, installing the rafters uh, with these Mendo Ita between them, these little uh, block pieces. And we also installed some small Mendo Ita at the top of the roof for a cleaner look from the inside before laying down the visible tongue and groove, then insulation, the supporting structure, and finally the sheathing boards just like the main roof. Now that the roof was sheathed and tarped, and we had an enclosed space, the whole team moved on to rebuilding the floor. This involved first fitting new floor beams between the existing posts, which we call ashigatame, and then we installed the large spanning beams, kind of like big joists, those are called obiki. Uh, the cedar tongue and groove flooring that we've used in many of these projects is about 30 millimeters thick. It's very strong and it can span these large distances between the obiki. This is a more simplified floor construction than I detail in my barn floor build-out series, so check that series out if you want another way to do about the same thing. The process in the entryway was the same, except we installed some substructure to support more insulation under the floor, and then it was a matter of scribing and fitting each board into the space. And that dirt entrance area that you can see in the, on the right side is, well, it was eventually filled with cement and sort of made as like a little entry alcove. And the last part of this work was flooring out the hallway and the bathroom areas. And the detail here was back cutting and fitting each board for a clean transition to the main floorboards, which were at 90 degrees to the hall boards. So many months later, actually, this finishing this was my last project while I was out in Japan, was helping my teacher do some plumbing fit out. When we returned, the bulk of the plaster work was complete and the building was looking amazing. Uh, it had just started to become spring and no mosquitoes and anything like that. Uh, so we installed the plumbing and septic, which involved me digging this huge hole and then we hauled this massive tank from the road hundreds of feet lower in elevation. It was very heavy and awkward. Uh, we installed the tank and the vent stack, and I put the toilet and plumbing fixtures in. I really do like the this sort of aged tile sink. There's kind of a lot of wabi-sabi, farmer chic aesthetic going on here. And this last shot is uh, the washroom area. It's really my favorite room in the house. It has this amazing light and an incredible view of the harbor and shipyard below. Check out the views in the background here. Literally, we start the day uh, at the bottom of this hill. And for some reason, my boss parked the truck at the, to at the top of the hill. So we just get to carry our tools 
all the way up after working all day long in the sun. Uh, but it's awesome. It's like a wellness retreat. Exercise all day, eat good food, go to the onsen. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. All right. Thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, please consider supporting Never Stop Building. The easiest way to do that is to simply hit that red subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of new videos. If you really want to be my friend, you could become a Patreon where you can get plans, exclusive content, merchandise, and all that jazz. So check the description below for a link. I want to give a shout out to our new Patreon, Eric. I really appreciate the support and that really helps us keep 